Hello, 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 and welcome to your character education video for April. My name's Cord, and I'm glad that you're here. In case you're new, character education is the place where kids come together to discover big ideas, traits like kindness, respect, and honor. And these are words that go inside of us to change the world around us. And I just love how easy it is for you to learn these words. You just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. You don't need to pack bags and go on a big epic trip around the world. You just come here and uh, everybody welcome Tucker. Um, it seems like you might be going on a trip. Yeah, apparently. Everyone, this is my co-host. Uh, at least I thought he was hosting today, but... Man, it looks like you're hitting the road. So it seems. Are you... Uh, are you looking for something? I just want to take it all in. I want to burn the memory of this place into my mind forever. Please don't use matches or any open flame. And I want to... I, Corey, I just want to remember this place forever. Okay. Especially when I'm gone. Which brings me back to the original question. In fact, you know what, Corey? I, I want to take it with me. I want to take this place with me. I'm taking this notebook. I want to remember all those lines that I should have memorized over the years. Okay, Tucker, uh, what are you doing with this? Oh, and those pieces of acoustic sound paneling? From when I remit, when I tried to be Santa Claus, when I pretended to be Santa Claus that day, but um, I actually got stuck in Andrew's um, chimney. Yeah, we're all trying to forget that memory. That oh, was and crazy. Oh, how could I forget this? How could I forget these things? This lamp. This is the lamp that I accident that I really rewired, but accidentally shocked Melissa with. And I don't think this whole thing will fit, but maybe if I crush the lampshade, it should be good. Okay, stop that. I, I don't want you destroying stuff. What's going on with this? And you know what? I should really take my mic with me. I have a special connection to that. Tucker, we're trying to have our character education here. What's going on? Well, you're going you're gonna to do that right, without me. You're going to go right on without me. It won't be the same without you. <laughs> Corey, I know! <clears throat> okay, okay, stop crushing the stuff. It's bending and breaking. If I'm terrible, it's because you made me do all the hard stuff. Terrible? I'm, you're not terrible. Who said that? <sighs> you know what? I gotta pour this out. Don't want this stupid coffee. Well, I guess there's only one thing left to do. Okay, okay. Tucker. You know... You know, what is it? Give this to her. Her? Her who? Hope. Hope? Yeah, Miss Hopity Hope Hope. My replacement. Your replacement? Don't pretend like you haven't been planning to replace me for months. I found this production note backstage. I, I don't know what you mean by these notes. I mean, look at it. Read it. Are you happy now? I caught you guys. Yeah, uh, coffee stain, greasy pizza spot, smudge marks. I can't read this. Oh, yes, you can. See, it says, Tucker, terrible things, something good, out of bad, hope. Okay. You're bringing in some super funny popular girl named Hope to take over this co-host since you, you just think I'm terrible. <laughs> Tucker, you are not terrible. You're getting rid of me. Okay. <laughs> Tucker, this is our outline for today's character education, and this is the part where you're supposed to introduce the big idea. Wait, what? Well, let's just go over it together. The big idea. Um, drum roll. Drum roll on your legs. Come on. Here it goes. Three, two, one. Hope is believing that something good can come out of something bad. 
So hope isn't my replacement, and I can stay. You're not getting rid of me? Tucker, you are irreplaceable. You guys still love me! Yes, we definitely love you. Come on. Let's let's let these people watch some hope filled videos. Um, I'm gonna have to pay for that lampshade, aren't I? Absolutely. kids, I'm Lawson, and this was supposed to be the ice cream triple scoop sensation of the decade, which instead ended up in the hamster habit trail. It's quite a story. Two seconds of silence for my departed ice cream. But that's not the story I'm here to tell you today. I just heard this super awesome story from my friend Jeff's kid brother Landon. Now Landon loves to run. And he's so good that Coach Dash thinks that he can win first place at the cross-country meet this year. And become cross-country champion of the entire country. And the champion of the whole world. But Landon has this little sister who is totally into Legos. Which she always leaves lying around. At night. On the stairs. And Landon's like... And then the next day, at the big cross country meet, he has to tell his coach that he can't run for three months. And then he has to sit and wait while everyone else warms up. And then his coach comes by and tells him that he's been a really good sport. But on the inside, Landon is silently screaming. And throwing things. And, and bashing everything in sight. And then his friend Drew comes over to check on him and see if he wants a donut. And Landon says, is that what you ate for breakfast? And Drew says, yeah. And then Landon warns him that he'll have a sugar crash if he doesn't eat some protein before the race. And Connor comes over to show off his new shoes. And Landon points out that he looks really tight and should probably do some hamstring stretches before the race. So while Connor's off stretching, Landon sees Tyler, whose form is way off. So Landon waves him over and reminds him to shorten his stride and to stop flapping his arms around or else he'll take off like a giant duck. And then when the race comes, Landon cheers like crazy. And then he does the hokey pokey. And he turns himself around and then his whole team wins first place. They all say it was Landon's advice that helped them do so well. And then the coach asks Landon if he'll stick with them for the rest of the season as my assistant coach. And Landon high fives him and says, I'll be your mini me. And then everybody else cheers some more because turns out Landon is a great coach and he helps them all become the champions of the universe. So kids, remember, never ever do a Lego build at the top of the stairs, but do remember that hope is believing that something good can come out of something bad. I could use a new hat. Or a donut holder. Ooh. <laughs> Thanks, hamster. See you guys next time. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Got the spot. Hey, everyone. I sure hope you guys are ready to have fun. But even if you aren't, I'm willing to get you guys there. We're gonna take the time to play a little game. But first, I want you to repeat this after me. Hope, believing something good can come out of something bad. Of course, the animal this month is the butterfly. The interesting thing about butterflies is their vision. It's true. They have a broader field of vision and see a wider spectrum of light. They can see a bigger picture. You know, sometimes to believe the best, you have to take a look at the bigger picture. You have to see that sometimes the bad comes just before the good, which is why we're going to play a little game called Get the Picture. Get out a piece of paper and pencil and number it from 1 to 10. We're going to have a very zoomed in photo come up on the screen. 
If you know what the bigger picture is, write it beside that number and let's see who can guess, get the big picture. Here we go. One. Two. You guys are doing great. These are kind of tough though, aren't they? Number six. Number seven. done. Number nine. Lastly, number ten. Okay, let's see how you did. Trade your paper with your neighbor and let them check for you just for fun. Number one was a butterfly. Number two, a water bottle. Number three, school bus. Number four, crayons. Number five, tires. Number six, a dog. Number seven, donuts. Number eight, Fish. Number nine, a rose. And number 10, a keyboard. All right, great game, everyone. Way to get the picture. That's what hope is all about, seeing the bigger picture. This week has been bad. Sad. Well, nothing like I thought it would be. This morning when I woke up, I almost forgot what day it was, and then I remembered. But I wish it was last week again. I never thought Mom would get sick, and now that she is, it makes me notice how many things she really did for us. But the small things all week have made me feel better, even if it's only a little bit. The amazing doctors and nurses, the people who sent notes and cards, or even dropped off dinner, have all made me see how much people care about us. And my sister and I haven't fought once all week. In fact, I feel closer to her and dad than I have in a long time. Going to visit her today gives me hope that when she gets home, our family can see each other differently. Maybe even though something bad happened, she got sick. Something good can come out of that. Jan. Is there anyone out there who's not afraid to get a little wet? I'm just asking because I have a little, oh, you could say experiment that I'd like to try out with you. Before I call up my helper though, let's go over this month's big idea. Now repeat this after me. Hope. Believing something good can come out of something bad. See, I think hope can be kind of a hard big idea to really understand or put into practice sometimes. I mean, we talk about how the big idea is something that happens inside of you to change the world around you, but what actually happens with hope? Have you ever heard the phrase, hope for the best? When you hear that, usually it's kind of this unsure and really vague thing like, we'll hope for the best, but there's nothing we can do about it. How about this phrase, false hope? Have you ever heard that phrase before? False hope is when someone believed something good would happen and then it didn't. See, when we hear these phrases, we might feel like hope as a big idea won't accomplish that much. 
but I think it's important to hear the definition a little differently. Believing something good can come out of something bad. So when we are talking about hope in this context, another good word would be optimism. Optimism is looking on the bright side and it can accomplish more than you think. When we talk about believing something good, really what we're talking about is changing where you put your focus. Now, as I said earlier, I have a little bit of an experiment to do here, but I'm going to need a little help. Kristen, can you come out and help me please? All right, now this is a very simple experiment. If you have your parents' permission, you could even try this experiment at home. Here we have a clear glass. It's very important if you do this experiment to get a firm glass, one, that, one that's not very flexible when you grab the sides. Next, we have a pitcher of just regular water. Kristen, would you put some water into that glass for me? That was pretty good, but we need to fill this thing up all the way to the rim because we're going to let this water represent something bad. Maybe a lot of little bad things because the truth is bad things happen to everyone. As much as we might not want it to, bad things are going to come our way. And when they do that, really stinks. Just like how right now, if I turn this glass upside down, it would make a huge mess. A splash all over Kristen and cause a big mess. So if we're looking at this glass full of bad stuff, we might try and prepare for it, right? I mean, nobody wants bad stuff to happen to them. So um, we're gonna need a small pool. And why don't we have Kristen stand in that? And then also probably like a poncho and a hat. See, when bad things come into our life, we can spend a lot of time focusing on them. And sometimes we spend a lot of time worrying, which is like the poncho here, or a lot of time thinking about all the what ifs. And while it's not a bad idea to prepare for some things, there's also a problem. Our focus is on the water, it's on the trouble, it's on all the bad things that could ever possibly happen. Optimism or hope is believing that even though there's bad, good things can still come out of it. A pair of goggles, please. So put those on and let's try turning this cup over. You good? <laughs> I'm a little scared. Oh. Wait, we have the raincoat, we have the hat and the goggles and the pool. Those things feel concrete, firm. And sometimes that's how it feels to worry and stress. You notice it hasn't actually done anything to the water in the glass, but it feels like maybe it could. Then we have hope. It doesn't feel or seem very sturdy at all. It doesn't even seem like it could do much to help when bad things come our way. But hope is a choice to focus on the right thing. Instead of focusing on the water, on the bad things in our life, we focus on something different. And when we do that, when we focus on all the right things, all of a sudden hope seems a lot sturdier than we thought. All of this stuff that we have on our volunteer is doing less now than our little card that represents hope. That choice to believe something good can come out of something bad. Let's give it up for brave Kristen. So, how is it that hope was able to keep that water in the glass? Well, because while we were all focused on the water, there was something else in the room that some of us might not have even thought about, air. See, air pressure is what kept this card from falling to the ground and that water from going everywhere. Air is filling this entire room even though you can't see it. It's pushing on everything. So when we put a wide card with a large surface area and placed it over the cup, the air pushing on it keeps the water from falling out. The thing is, when bad things happen, they can keep our focus. But there's something else that is harder to see that can make all the difference. That's potential. Just like the air in this room, our circumstances have potential, sometimes unseen potential. And we talk a lot about maximizing our potential. 
There's a quotation from John Adams that I think explains it very well. Every challenge is an opportunity in disguise. The truth is that opportunities and potential can be hard to see when there's a problem that we're facing. But that doesn't mean hope can't do something about the bad things that come our way. It can. Because when bad things come our way, we can choose to see them as opportunities. Or we can choose to focus on our own potential. We can't always control the stuff that happens to us, but we always get a vote on our reaction. There's another quote I love. I can't change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust my sails to always reach my destination. That's the power of hope. It's realizing that even when we don't get a choice about the bad things that happen in our lives, we do get to choose where we put our focus and how we adjust our sails to maximize our potential. Treat others right and make smart decisions. I don't know how to help. Ever since Whitney got sick, Mom and Dad have been busy. And life is, well, I've had to do my homework in the hospital. We're all just hoping for the best. Nobody really smiles anymore. It's weird, because she always used to be the one to make us laugh, and now that she needs someone to help her laugh, we can't even be in the same room. I've been carrying around that bag of letters and cards from her friends for days. I wanted to read them to her. You know, like how she used to read to me, with all the silly voices. If I had to be outside her room, at least I could make a show about what her friends have been saying. I loved her face. It was time for her to rest. Her nurse asked if I'd like to do a show for some of the other kids. It's believing something good can come out of something bad. You know, all year long, we've looked at a number, and that number is 160,000. And honestly, it's not a very good number. Because when we looked at this number, we realized what it stands for. Every day, 160,000 kids stay home from school because they're afraid of being bullied. That means that yesterday, when you left for school, there were 160,000 kids they didn't leave because they believed they were going to be bullied or they have been bullied. Obviously, that's bad. So what does this month's big idea have to say about this? How can we believe that something good can come out of 160,000 kids staying home from school every single day? Here I've got a bubble wand and it's kind of like hope in this instance. It's like a bubble. It holds a ton of potential. I'm going to try to blow a huge bubble here, so let's see if I can do it. There's a good one right there. Boom! <laughs> That's awesome. Like 160,000 can steal our hope because it seems like it would be impossible for anything good to come out of something that bad. But what if something good could come out of something that bad? Remember that every single challenge is an opportunity in disguise. The reason that we've been talking about this number all year long is because we have hope for the future. What if by looking at the 160,000 kids that choose to stay home yesterday, we decided that we would all do something about it? When we look at the bad of yesterday, we can imagine hope and work toward the good of tomorrow. We can work hard to lower that 160,000 number down to zero. We can make the smart decision and tell adults that we trust when we see bullying, we can do something about it. We can treat others right by refusing to ever, really never bully others. 
And we can most certainly maximize our potential by choosing to hope and work toward that zero number. And when we all do that, when we all hope, well, it becomes a lot harder to burst the bubbles. When we all remember that 160,000 kids that had to stay home yesterday, we can work hard for each kid to go home to school tomorrow. And when one of us feels our bubble bursting, we can come alongside each other and remind the other to continue to hope and to count down to zero. Oh, hey there. I'm MC Haggis. I'm the world's greatest Scottish rapper. And this here is my beatboxing partner, Seamus McFamous. Hi. What? <laughs> oh, oh I, I'm sorry. I forgot about you showing him how you can beatbox. I'm sorry, Seamus. I'm, I'm a bit distracted today. You see, I'm feeling stuck, uninspired, blocked up. Hey. No, no brand. That'll, uh, that won't help. Just I can't think of any rhymes for my raps. Seamus, I have writer's block. <laughs> uh, Seamus, I don't know what to do. I, I, I feel like there's no way out of this dark place of no rhymes and words. And it's a dark place, Seamus. There's no hope. You're all this for me, would you? <laughs> Uh. <laughs> oh, where'd you go? Where'd you go and drop that block? Ow! Oh, it hurts so bad. I can barely talk. This day's gone from bad to worse. Hold on, I just wrote a verse. What? Did you hear that? Seamus, did you hear that? I was in an immense pain, but I was able to rap. I made a rhyme. I, I, I think my foot's gonna be okay. Did, did you see what happened, Seamus? <laughs> Even though it was really bad when you dropped the cinder block on my precious, precious foot and tremendous pain shot all through my body, I was still able to lay down a fat rhyme through the pain. Something good came out of something bad. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Right from that. Yeah. Oh! 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 <laughs> I'm gonna put my foot down. Oh, oh, Seamus, I love you. But if you drop that block on my foot one more time. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Great job. I hope you enjoyed our character, Ed. One more time, repeat this after me. Hope, believing something good, can come out of something bad. Now put it to work inside of you to change the world around you. See you guys next month. Sometimes things are out of my control. And sometimes I don't understand why the rolling thunder rolls. But when the rain falls from the sky, the grass turns green, the flowers bloom, and I stop asking why. Because I know with hope, there's always a better tomorrow. It's hard to believe the best, but you can't win if you give.
know And sometimes I don't understand why the rolling thunder rolls I can't It's hard to believe the best, but